I get paid by the word, right, Pastor? Yeah. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So if you just pray with me, we'll get started and, and uh, get into our lesson today. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate having you here today. And look forward to your in input and insights as well. So uh, that's what we want to do, just be as interactive as possible. Father, we just come to you today thanking you for who you are. Thanking you, God, for being our Savior, our Deliverer, our Fortress, that ever-present help. The one who provides and protects God. We just thank you for all of those things. And we also thank you, Lord, for your inspiration. God, as we get into your word and, and discover who you are and what you have done for us and what you plan for us, uh, it's it's humbling and it's it's awesome. God, and we just thank you for that. And as we study today, we just pray your anointing, Lord, upon each and every one of us. God, that those thoughts and uh, words you place in our hearts and our mouth will come forth. Uh, to encourage one another, to build one another up, to just uh, see the kingdom further. Bless our time together and just continue to uh, uh, bless us as we, we study your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, um, we uh, kicked off last week looking at false prophets and teachers and uh, running off of our, our uh, uh, text that we use throughout in uh, 2 Peter uh, 1. Uh, where we uh, are exhorted to uh, add these things to our character and develop our character. Not to be a character, but to have character. And to develop those things that we need uh, for the things we're talking about. Is because if we don't have that character, we don't have that rooting, that grounding, that direction. Uh, it, it, uh, when we get into situations that are difficult, uh, we just lose it. <laughs> But if we're anchored in the Lord and, and have uh, disciplined ourselves and allowed Him to discipline us and to train us and direct us, then that training kicks in. You know, we've heard it said many times that when soldiers get into the middle of, of conflict and everything, the thing that saved them is their training. Because that, that, that fear, everything would have taken over, they would have lost it. But because of that training and that persistence, and, and they were able to, to persevere in the face of, uh, of great obstacles and overcome. And uh, that, that bears fruit in our lives as well. So we want to keep that in mind. Uh, so we're talking about false prophets and teachers. And our uh, text today, there are also uh, false prophets also among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who privilege shall bring in damnable heresies. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness they will, uh, with feigned words, make merchandise of you. And then I like the verse 9 there. The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations. Isn't that a, a blessing? The Lord knows how to deliver. Not you, not me, uh, but the Lord knows. And that's what we need to rely upon. And to reserve the unjust to the day of judgment. Okay, so that's uh, where we're, we're going today. And as we go through this, I want to just kind of give you a brief synopsis of what I had uh, planned and, uh, and I feel the Holy Spirit's inspiring us to. So if you're talking about false prophets, we first want to talk about true prophets. Okay, and, and lay the foundation. What, are, what does a true prophet look like? They say that if you're in the banking business, they would all, you, all show you all kinds of, of real money. And you would get to know that so well, you didn't even, when a counterfeit come up, you knew right away that it was counterfeit. You didn't have to study the counterfeit. Uh, you just study the real. And, and, and so, in that sense, that's what we're doing. Uh, but we want to make sure that we are, are uh, uh, doing it. And then we'll, we'll look at the false prophets and then the, the warnings, beware. And then uh, just some of the things that we can do to help some of the, uh, a few of the strategies we can have that God has given to us to differentiate between uh, true and false, false prophets. So God desires to commun communicate through prophets. When I uh, Google the word prophet, just to see what's there, I like to do. There's 470 uh, occurrences in scripture. So prophecy and prophets is very important to God. And he chooses to communicate to them. There's 130 of them in the New Testament, so about a third and two thirds is the way it's broken down. So it's kind of interesting to see that that uh, uh, emphasis that God is placing that He would have so much to say about this uh, ministry and gift. And so God desires to communicate through prophets. 
Uh, Moses was challenged one time when, when God had the moon in 70. There were a couple of guys that started prophesying. They came, hey, what do we, should we do with these guys? And this was Moses' answer. Then Moses said to him, are you zealous for my sake? Oh, that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Wow. You know, and then it's kind of reiterated in, in Paul's writings, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. And then verse 5, I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesy. Yeah. You know, so, so uh, this is the desire that God has for each and every one of us. And sometimes we may not be called a prophet, but I think there are times when we prophesy and we don't even know it. The Holy Spirit speaking through us and ministering to people, and, and, and we don't even realize it sometimes uh, that, that that's going on. And there are those, I believe, that are called to be prophets, just like called to be teachers and preachers and other offices that will be filled uh, for that purpose. But I think that there are times when, when God will just put a prophecy on us and, and in us, and we're speaking His Word. And we'll see that that's, that's one of the things that, that occurs uh, through prophecy. Um, and maybe some of you, have, have any of you ever been, uh, know that you've been used in the, in the gift of prophecy or prophesied? Good. Okay. A few of us here. <laughs> That's right there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel that I have. I don't feel like I'm a prophet, but I do feel that God has used me yeah, to prophesy <coughs> once in a while. Because uh, we'll see that in, in some of the, the, the instances that God will use people. Uh, and sometimes it's specifically, I want you to do it. And then there are other times where it's just like, hey, you're the closest one, go, go speak to this. You know, so, so it can happen in, in, in different ways. Okay, um, what is a prophet? In 1 Corinthians 12, 28, we find that he's appointed by God and, and, and anointed by God, you know. So God, God appoints them. He, he's the one that says, hey, I want you to go and speak my word. I want you to go and share this message and to deliver uh, this word. We also know that they're moved by the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, in 2 Peter 1, 21, uh, it goes back to, For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So, so the Holy Spirit also is involved in, in this ministry. They, they work together. You know, we know God, uh, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Ghost, they they, they work in unity. They have the science, same goals, mindset, uh, everything. They're, they're one in, in every sense. And so uh, it's no surprise that when it comes to a ministry that God wants us to be involved with. Uh, you know, his, his plan of salvation, his way of, of doing things would, it would be far different than if I did it. Mine would be a mess, obviously. But, but his... It, it, he, he wants imperfect vessels like us to, to be used, you know. And there's a lot of reasons for that, I'm sure. We could go through a lot of them. But, but nonetheless, we shouldn't hold back just because, well, uh, I can't do this or I'm not worthy. Because you'll see prophets in the Old Testament, New Testament, both that, that would kind of use that. Moses himself, hey, I, 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 I thought, you know. Uh, he, he had that, that issue, didn't he? I can't, I can't, I can't speak, you know. Uh, and sometimes we, we might have a physical impediment like that. Sometimes it might just be a fear that when we get up in front of people, it's... <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if you've ever been there, but to have stage fright is not a, a, a fun thing to have. And it can be intimidating. Um, but thankfully, God helps us through those things and in that way. And then... Uh, One thing I know, just an illustration is... There was one gentleman in our church who uh, he studied all the time, literally all the time. He would not be able to complete a sentence at all without mm -hmm. this stutter. And but when the Spirit of God would come upon him and he would prophesy, there was not a single stutter wow. in the whole, you know, expression of what God was saying. And then when he was done, he would go back to this whole stuttering thing. So it was rather interesting how the Spirit of God actually used his stuttering to indicate more clearly this is God because otherwise it was his natural stuttering process. Mm -hmm. Wonder if maybe Moses was kind of that way too, you know, when, when the anointing came on him if he just spoke as clearly without a stutter, without hesitation at all, you know. 
Because I've seen that happen too, where, where the, even with the pastor, you know, a preacher, they, they started, but once they got into the Word and got to, to preaching, it was just like two different people, <laughs> you know. A, a, a switch was flipped there, and, and, and you could tell that it was just the anointing of God in there. So, yeah, thanks, thanks for that as well. And a prophet also, in 1 Corinthians 14, is one who speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort. Okay? So not only is he anointed, but he has a message that has those components in it of some sort. You know, I'm, uh, I'm going to, to uh, bring a word to encourage you. I'm going to bring a word to exhort you and warn you. Or, uh, you know, we heard some of that Wednesday night, didn't we? Uh, some testimony of, of how God uh, used that. And, and, and let me just say this, and if I'm, uh, this is just kind of from my, my experience, is a lot of times when you're given a personal uh, prophecy or somebody's, somebody's sharing with you something, typically it's confirmation. God's already been speaking to you personally. And when he sends somebody else to talk to you, typically it's just to confirm what you're, well, is this really me or is it God? And then somebody comes up to you and says, hey, God told me to tell you this or I don't know what this means, but boom, and you get hit, wow, you know. And, and that, that's typically the way I see God working in, in person, and then even in corporate, where, where a church is trying to determine something and then somebody from has no idea what's, what decisions are needed to be made or things to be done or what God is trying to do in that ministry and somebody come in and preach a message that, that had no connection with, with the decisions or understanding that issue. And, and it just confirmed what the body is working on as well. So does that, does that ring a bell with anybody? Uh, I mean, if I'm on base, let me know. But that, that's kind of what I've seen personally happen and, and, and seeing God work in that. So, so those uh, things, that's, that's what a true prophet is. It's someone that's coming for those purposes. Usually, and, and we'll, we'll see this as we go along with you know, the false prophet, it's, it's, these guys are not coming to, to glorify themselves or to, to exalt themselves. And, and they're coming just to share, share the word of, word of God and, and in that regard. So um, this is what God is sharing with me. This is what I'm giving to you. Anybody have any comments? Can I ask you a question? The question being is, so then if it's, and it is, for edification, exhortation, and comfort, as it does say in First Corinthians 14. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between those three things? Edification, how does it differ from exhortation? How does exhortation differ from the aspect of comforting? Okay, this is, this is my take on that, and that's why I threw it in there, is, is edification is, like I was saying, a confirmation or something to give you confidence to say, okay, this is the direction I need to go. It's something that builds you up and, and enables you to have have confidence in in what what you feel God would, would have you to do. Exhortation usually is a little bit more of, hey, you need to straighten up and fly right type of a thing. You know, uh, the God's coming to you and he's, he's sharing with you, hey, there's something in your life you need to correct here. There's something, it's, it's more of a disciplinarian uh, type of a thing uh, is the way I would take that. And then, then comfort. Um, sometimes we go through some very challenging things, and, and we need uh, that uh, comfort from God that only can bring. And that's 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 who the Holy Spirit is, right? The, the Comforter. So it should be no surprise to us that that's one of the the uh, uh, what I'm going to say. Uh, Duties, responsibilities, I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to think of the word that I want there, but I can't think of it. Uh, but, but it's one of those things that, that, uh, that since he is that, that that's going to be part of that, that uh, ministry that will come out is, is, is comfort. Do you have anything to add to that? that you, well, no, I like, I like that. I like that. That some people, when they, they read this, particular first Corinthians 14, they would want to add another one. That is, it forecasts or mm -hmm. yes. it, something towards the future, yeah. but in 1 Corinthians 14, 3, it doesn't talk about that. Right. Yeah, and that's that's another aspect I should have added that in there as well, is sometimes, like like we see in the Old Testament prophets, even John and the New Testament prophets, there's a foretelling too, is there a foretelling? 
not not just just this is this is what God is going to do. And so yeah, that's a very important part of Proverbs. Sometimes, we, and I didn't emphasize that as much uh, because when everybody hears the word prophet, they immediately think, oh, you're going to tell me what my future holds. You know, and, and not not always is it that. Here's here's three three things that that God is using to correct and change, and it might include some of those things as well. But uh, I would just add that if there is that kind of a prophecy that comes forth, that's kind of a future uh, type of thing. A lot of times, what I've seen people do, especially if it's a personal thing, they try to make that happen themselves. Well, God said He was going to do this for me, so I'm going to go make this happen because yeah. He said it was going to happen, and they get into just. Okay, rather than just, God said he's going to do it, let him do it. Uh, and, and, and we can get in trouble sometimes trying to get the part before the horse. Pass that. I, I, my coffee is just kicking in, so you might have covered this. But um, did you cover the difference between a prophet and one who prophesies in the church? I did. Okay. No. The gift of prophecy and the, the office of a prophet are two different things. Right. And, and the office of a prophet is more of the, force, the future telling. The uh, projecting, whereas somebody just is using the gift of prophecy is, is more like what this is right. saying here. Yeah, and I did touch on that a little bit, but thank you for clearing, clearing that up. Anybody else have, uh, want to add anything to that? Uh, yeah. Um, I've often thought that, it, or it seemed to me at least, that the gift of prophecy as exercised in the church, that when I've seen it in its I thought it to be authentic. It seemed like the person knew what was on God's heart for a particular scenario, situation, but it not necessarily involving them. You know, it was like for somebody else. Right. God, what, whatever's on God's mind. And so nowadays, when I when I hear a prophetic utterance. I always kind of run it through that. And does this sound like something that is that is on God's heart, right. or that God would would uh, endorse or be involved? Right. Yes, Mr. Clark. Yeah, I want to share a few times, and it's been surprising. But in a group setting, a group of people, and you know, more than two or three times, I've seen someone just blurt something out. And then their eyes get as big as saucers, and they say, I have no idea why I just said that. <laughs> and then I'm like, I know exactly what they said that, and I'm not saying anything. <clears throat> but it's like the Lord brings his, it's kind of, it's, uh, sometimes people don't like to be around the prophetic. Right. Because truth is <clears throat> like this pearl that just comes right out. And um, like I say, when that's happened before, that's even happened to me once. And I'm like, I do not know what I just said or why I said it. Please don't kill me. You know? yeah. But it was the word of God from a yielded vessel. Even though the, it would say that the spirit of the prophet was subject to the prophets. Mm -hmm. And we are covered and we, are, we can't just go saying crazy things. But we won't say it. We yeah. Say it, so. and, and, and sometimes that's when you know it, it's really authentic when they're surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 What, what they're saying. But again, I just want to reiterate as we get into this, there would be no need for a false prophet. We wouldn't even hear the word false prophet if God had not established this line of communication for his people. Because why do you have the fake food that Ricky was talking about last week? Because we like the real food so good. But hey, if I can get it cheaper and it can taste the same and, and, and feel the same, it may not be the same result. <laughs> And obviously, sometimes it isn't as good for us, obviously, as the the real thing. But but so we, when we get into this, uh, just just realize the reason there is pseudo prophets and false prophets is because they are real. And so as we get into this, I don't want, and that's one of the reasons I, I, I wanted to start with this is because we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Because you get to discovering the negative so much. Well, boy, there's so much bad about prophets, and prophecy, and prophets, and I don't want any part of it. So they just they just don't have anything to do with it. Uh, because because uh, of the the, the bad uh, stuff that happens, and then then it gets the prophecy, a bad name, and prophecy of that name. So so uh, that's one of the things I wanted to bring uh, these things out. One more okay. point. One more point about that. This is First Corinthians fourteen three is that.